If you're an anxious traveler or you just haven't traveled by air in a long time, I want to help take the stress out of your travel day with these 21 tiny itty bitty little travel tips that could make a huge difference in your overall experience. Let's go. Our first teeny tiny travel tip is to book a morning flight. And the earlier in the morning that you can do it, the better. Because morning flights rarely get canceled or delayed. And if they do get canceled or delayed, you have the whole rest of the day to get rebooked on another flight to get you to your destination that day. Day. I personally like taking morning flights anyway because I love getting to where I'm going to the earliest that I can. I don't mind having to get up super early because I figure I can always sleep on the plane. Our next tiny travel tip is still dealing with booking your flight and that is to book a direct flight if at all possible. Now I fly a lot out of Raleigh-Durham and unfortunately there's not a lot of places that Raleigh flies to direct. But if you live near a large airport like Atlanta or Chicago or even in Portland or other places, bigger cities, Dallas, Houston, if you have the ability to book a direct flight, that's what you should do. Because again, if you only have one flight you have to take in order to get to where you're going and it gets delayed or canceled, there's a lot more options to get you on another flight to get where you're going. Also, it means you only have to deal with the possibility of a delay or cancellation of one flight instead of two or three flights. So to take the stress out of the day, try to book a direct flight if at all possible. Number three, something else that is super easy to do and doesn't take very long is to get yourself some travel insurance. This will give you so much peace of mind while you are traveling, even if you never have to use it. Because as we all know, with pretty much all insurance that you purchase for yourself, the idea is that you don't ever want to actually have to use it. But if you have travel insurance when you are traveling, it helps take a lot of the stress out of anything going wrong. Now I do have a travel insurance link down below in the description and I'll also link it in a comment at the bottom too that you can go to and kind of shop around for the best insurance for your trip. It is not one particular company. It's kind of like a clearinghouse. So you just put in the details of your trip and then it'll give you several options that you can choose from. So you can choose the best travel insurance for you. So I will have that linked below. And I do have an affiliate link for that. And anytime that you use one of my affiliate links, it does support this channel so I can keep bringing you good travel tips and hacks so that you can continue to travel stress-free. So I do appreciate it when you use those links. Fourth tip, download your airlines app. I talk about this in so many different videos, but it is such a small little thing that you can do that will help with your stress. If you have your airlines app downloaded to your phone, you'll know as soon as something is going wrong with your flight and be able to address it faster than a lot of other people can. Plus, I just like having the app to be able to have my boarding passes in there, to be able to look up the information on the airport that I'm going to so I can see where my next gate's going to be. There's just so much information that's at your fingertips when you have your airlines app on your phone for your travel. Next, decide early on in your process of planning if you're gonna check a bag or do carry on only packing and make sure that you pack accordingly because there are some things that you can only pack in a checked bag and there are some things that need to go in your carry-on bag if you're not checking a bag. Mainly I'm talking about lithium batteries cannot go in a checked bag. They can't go in the belly of the airplane because they are a fire hazard. But make sure that when you are planning your trip that you plan knowing whether you are checking a bag or doing carry-on only. That will just save you a lot of headache later on. Like I know that when I go to Japan, that even though I'm taking a carry-on suitcase size, I'm actually going to be checking that suitcase. So I will be pack packing that bag knowing that I am checking that bag and I don't have to worry about following the carry-on rules 
but also I'll know not to pack any lithium batteries in that bag and anything else that's not supposed to go in a check bag. And talking about suitcases, this is a big one. A lot of people get caught unawares about, and that is to make sure you know what your airline's bag size and weight restrictions are because they are changing all the time. There is no consistency across the board for all of the airlines. So you want to make sure that if you are going to do a carry-on bag, that you know the dimensions of that carry-on bag that is allowed for the airplane or airline that you are flying on. You also need to know the weight restrictions for that bag because there are airlines that do weigh those carry-on bags and they are pretty strict about what the weight restrictions are. So make sure you know that information. I have a link and I'll have it below in the description that will it goes to a website that gives most airlines bag sizes and weight restrictions, at least for, I think, 2022. But you should just go to the airline that you are flying and make sure that you know those numbers for yourself. You don't want to arrive at the airport and have a bag that you want to check in and the weight restriction is 40 pounds, not 50 pounds, and now you've got to get rid of 10 pounds of stuff or pay an extra $75 because... Yeah, that's happened before. It's not fun and it's definitely stressful. <laughs> so that knowing that information will alleviate a lot of stress for you. Whether you are checking a bag or planning on doing carry-on, put a tracker in your suitcase. You never know when your carry-on suitcase is going to be checked, as I've mentioned before. So make sure you have something in your suitcase to be able to track it, just in case it does get lost. The Apple AirTags are great. The tile trackers are great. Just make sure you choose a tracker that can be tracked even if it's a thousand miles away because you know that's what was happening last year. And you wanna make sure that you can find that tracker on your phone when you need to. Also, as a side note here, take a picture of your suitcase before it gets checked because you might need to be able to identify your suitcase. But we're talking about ways to relieve your stress and we're not gonna think about the bad things that can happen. We're just thinking about the things that you can do to prevent extra stress just in case things go south. Now, all of that stuff are things that you can do way before your travel day to help make your travel day a little less stressful. As we get closer to your travel day, like two or three days before your trip, you want to go ahead and download the entertainment you're going to want during your trip, like ebooks or movies or YouTube videos that you want to watch. So you're not trying to do it when you are walking out the door or God forbid, at the airport with their lousy Wi-Fi. Number six is one that I do every time I fly, and that is to check in online as soon as you are able, usually 24 hours before your plane departs. And if you have already downloaded your airline's app, you can usually do it through the app, which makes it super easy. This gives you an opportunity to look and see if there's maybe better seats that you wanna choose for your flight, and to just make sure that you are all confirmed for your flight. It also gives you the opportunity, if you have decided to check a bag, to go ahead and pay for that before you get to the airport. So that is taken care of ahead of time. Make sure to fully charge your portable charger before you get to the airport. There are limited number of plugs in most airports. And really these days you wanna be kind of cautious about what you're plugging into an airport plug anyway. I know, I know you can't hack into a portable charger. It's not gonna give you any information, but you know, just to be on the safe side, bring your own charging station with you so that you can charge up your items if you need to. And with all the delays and cancellations that happen during this high travel season, having your portable charger already charged up so that you can use it throughout the day is going to be a major stress reliever, especially when you might want to listen to your meditation app to calm yourself down. I don't know about you, but I tend to do a lot of stress eating when I get stressed. And you know, travel is stressful. Even for those of us who travel a lot, travel days can be really stressful. That is why you should pack snacks for the airport and the airplane. And yes, you are allowed to bring food through the TSA line. Just make sure if it's anything that's a liquid or liquid-like that you put it in your liquids bag, like peanut butter or hummus or yogurt 
all of those things need to be in your liquids bag, but pretty much anything else, they don't care what kind of food that you're bringing through the TSA line. So whatever snacks you wanna bring, bring with you. Again, if you end up hitting some of those delays or cancellations, you don't wanna be looking around that airport and looking at buying a $10 bag of nuts when you could have brought nuts from your house. So pack your snacks and that will help alleviate some stress. And if not, at least you'll have something to snack on for your stress eating. One of the more stressful parts of the airport is getting through that security line. So pack your bags for getting through TSA easily. Make sure you have your liquids bag easily accessible if they want you to pull it out and your computer close to being able to pull out if you need to. I have TSA pre-check, so I don't typically have to do those things, but you know what? I still pack my personal item like I have to pull those things out anyway, because you never know when they're gonna change those rules up and you're gonna have to pull those items out. Hopefully we are moving towards not having to deal with our liquids bags anymore or even having to pull anything out of our personal item bags because they are putting in new scanner uh, technology into most airports. So oh, hopefully in a few years, we won't have to deal with this much longer. But for now, you want to make sure that you've packed your personal item bag or your carry-on or both so that it can get through TSA quickly and easily. I have done a couple of videos on this and I'll have those linked below as well. As I alluded to earlier, you want to pack your carry-on bag, not your personal item, but your carry-on suitcase for the potential of having it be checked at the gate. This includes having a tracker in that making sure if you have any medication in there that you've removed the medication and put it in your personal item bag and making sure there are no lithium batteries in that suitcase. So just, you know, have that ready to go just in case. Honestly, because I usually end up having to have a connecting flight, I typically don't mind if they check my carry-on at the gate. And I always have my carry-on packed so that it is able to be checked. That way I don't have to deal with my suitcase in another airport and getting onto another flight. And then I can just pick it up when I get to my destination. Now, if I'm going somewhere that I really want to get out of the airport quickly at the end of my travel day, then of course I'm going to try to keep it with me as much as possible. But, you know, I'll say, Eight times out of 10, I'm usually letting them check my bag at the gate because now I've got a check bag for free. This next tiny travel tip might seem a little simple, but you would be shocked at the number of people who forget to do this. And it is to double check and triple check and maybe even four times check that you have your ID and passport with you. You also want to check and make sure you have a printed copy of your itinerary, including the address of your accommodations and any other documentation that you might need. You need to be prepared in case your phone runs out of battery and you can't pull up the images or get onto the cloud to find that information out. I know a woman who was traveling once who did not have anything printed out. She had saved it all on her phone. So she had like photos of her itinerary and her address and everything like that. But she arrived at her destination and needed to get a taxi to get to her accommodations. I think it was an Airbnb and she didn't have the address. She had no idea where she needed to go and her phone was completely dead and her portable charger was completely dead as well. So make sure you have printed copies with you and that way you're covered if the worst case scenario happens and you run out of your phone battery because it can be challenging to be able to pull anything up on your phone if you don't have any juice. <laughs> you're gonna hear all sorts of different opinions about this next one. But to save you stress during your travel day, you want to arrive at the airport two hours before your plane is set to board. Not the departure time, but the boarding time. There's usually about a 20 to 30 minute 
cushion built into the boarding time before the departing time. Departing time is when that plane is actually supposed to be taking off of the tarmac. It is not the time that you're supposed to show up to the gate. You need to be at the gate when that plane is ready to board. So the best way to do this and ensure that you have plenty of time to get through those busy security lines, get to your gate, make sure you have everything settled and calm yourself before you get on that plane is to get to the airport two hours before your plane is set to board. And that time is differentiated on your boarding pass and on your airline's pass. Now, once you've gotten to the airport and you've checked your bags and you've gone through security, go directly to your gate. Don't stop for coffee yet. You need to know where your gate is and make sure that no changes have been made. That's the first thing you need to do once you get through security. I can't tell you how many times my gate has been changed from the time that I've checked in for my flight to the time that I actually arrive at the airport to go on my flight. So you want to make sure you're at the right gate. And if you're not at the right gate, then you need to go find what gate you need to be at. Once you've found your gate and everything is fine and there's been no changes, then you want to set an alarm for 10 to 15 minutes before your boarding time. Set an alarm on your phone, then you can go grab some coffee, use the bathroom, have a snack, maybe again, take this opportunity to use that meditation app to center yourself before your flight. Once you board and when you get to your seat, go ahead and pull out what you're going to want to use during the flight and put it in a gallon Ziploc bag in the seat back in front of you so it's easily accessible. And you don't have to be digging through your personal item bag all through the flight to get what you want. If you have a connecting flight, when you land after your first flight, immediately check your airlines app to find out what gate you need to go to. And maybe look and see if there's an airport map so you can get your bearings and know what direction you need to go from the gate that you are coming in at. Most of the apps will tell you, you'll have your arrival gate for the flight that you're coming in on, and then you will look for the departure gate for the flight that you are getting as your connecting flight. So if you're able to be able to look on the map and you know find those two and figure out where you need to go from point A to point B. Oftentimes, if you're flying on the same airline, you might not have to go very far at all. I've been lucky enough to have like, many of my flights end up being connecting where I'm only a couple of gates down from where I'm coming into. But then I've had those connections where it was clear across the airport as well. So just for a heads up, take a look at your app and kind of get your bearings for the airport and figure out where you need to go. And as before, go straight to that gate after you get off of your flight and before you do anything else unless you have enough time to pee because that's very important. Unless you are renting a car or are very familiar with the place you are going to, pre-book your transportation from the airport to your accommodations. This will just alleviate so much stress of trying to figure out how to get a taxi or an Uber to get you to wherever you're going. If you're going to a hotel, make sure if they have a shuttle, option that you have already booked that shuttle ahead of time. I just find not having to deal with finding my own transportation at the end of a long travel day and even a short travel day, it just makes the whole rest of the trip seem a lot less stress-free. Having somebody there to pick you up that you don't have to think about is just the best. One less thing to worry about during that day. <laughs> Lastly, don't pre-schedule any activities for the day you arrive. Just take that time to unwind and get used to being in a new place. Maybe walk around the city a bit or you know, schedule out things that you wanna do for the rest of the week if you don't already have an itinerary. If you are going somewhere that is going to be a time change and you need to get used to that time change, make sure you're getting out and you're getting sunlight in your eyes if it's during the daylight. Make sure you are staying up until a decent bedtime there so that you can quickly transition over to their time and not be jet lagged for three or four days because that's not any fun either. But mainly just take a deep breath and just enjoy being on your vacation. And if you want to know some more tiny things that could change your travel experiences, you should check this video out next.